I've got two key upgrades to make to this 2022 Marin Bobcat Trail 4 that I think will take this from a good bike to a great bike. So if you missed my last video on this bike, you can check it out on the card right here. It was my trail ride and review of this 2022 Marin Bobcat Trail 4. And basically the conclusion that I came to on that is that this is a really good bike at its price point. But there are a couple things that could be done to it to take it to a great bike. There are four main ingredients to having a great mountain bike. First, it starts with a good frame. The frame design and the geometry feels great on this bike, so we're off to a good start. The next thing you need is a solid drivetrain. And this checks that box too. Microshift Advent 9 speed, it's great. No reason to upgrade that. Next on the list is an air fork. Now this does not have that. It has a coil spring fork. Uh, an air fork is gonna give you more adjustability. It's gonna let you tune it for your weight to get the sag right. It'll allow you to set the rebound how you want it so it doesn't bounce back at you. So that's one major upgrade that I'm gonna make right now. And the other thing is a dropper post. Now a dropper post is a very crucial upgrade once you learn how to use one. So basically it's a lever that allows the seat to go up and down and on the fly you can adjust the height of the seat. And that helps you out because when you're on the trails and you hit some, some bumpy sections or you're going downhill, you want to get that seat down and allow the bike to move underneath you. Then when you're climbing or just on flat sections, you want the seat up higher for efficient pedaling. So for the fork, I actually have the RockShox Recon that came stock on my Marin Rift Zone. This is basically their entry level air fork. I think the Judy is the cheaper fork than this one. It does have steel uppers, so it's a little bit on the heavy side, but it is an air fork, so it has all the adjustability that I talked about before. Now putting this fork onto this frame does present a few challenges. It's a tapered fork and this bike does not have a tapered steerer tube. So that means that I also have to change the lower headset. Now the other minor challenge that this is a boost through axle fork and what's stock on the Marin Bobcat Trail is just a standard QR axle. I'm just gonna take the front wheel off of my Rift Zone to be able to put this together and ride it. If you were upgrading the fork on this yourself, I would suggest something like a SR Sun Tour Epixon or maybe a Radon or a Manitou Markor, or I think also the Judy and the Recon, if you buy them new, are available with the proper standards that you would need. And you don't have to do all the stuff that I'm about to do. The first step to putting on a new fork is removing the old fork. And the first step to that is removing this top cap. So I will unscrew this bolt here. And these bolts are generally way longer than they need to be. Now that that's out, the two stem bolts can come off. Now, when you're taking these stem bolts out, you do want to be sure that your front wheel is on the ground. Otherwise, it will just completely drop out on you. Okay, with the front wheel still on the ground, the bars and stem can come off as a combination. And I will just flip those over and let them dangle for now. There will be a series of rings that you also need to take off. And possibly the real first step should have been taking off the brake caliper. And there's usually a one mounting point that holds your brake hose on here. So take that off easily. If you were gonna reuse the same wheel, you could have taken the wheel off during this process too, but since I'm using the wheel from a different bike, I'm just leaving it as one piece. Now this is the lower part of the headset and these are the headset bearings. In the first video that I made on this bike, I assumed that since this is an FSA headset, that they would be seal bearings, but you can actually see that they're not. Uh, it's not really a huge deal. Um, you may need to just grease those more often. Now, like I said, for my case, I'm putting a tapered fork on here. That means that I have to pop out this lower cup to replace the bottom headset. Uh, it wouldn't be a down to ride video without doing some sort of improvising without either the proper tool or the proper fluids. And there is a tool to pop these out. I don't have it. I'm gonna try with a socket and an extension and just give it some gentle coaxing with a hammer. So let's see how that works. Mm -hmm. 
The part you need to run a tapered fork on this bike is an EC44, and I believe that stands for external cup 44 millimeters. This is a fun branded one that I picked up off of Amazon. I think it was somewhere around $20 or $30. I'll leave a link in the description. And quickly, just to compare it to the old one, you can see that the overall diameter is much larger on this, and that's going to allow that uh, wider tube of the tapered fork to go on. This is the crown race that's going to go on the fork. I will have to swap that over. And just so you can kind of see, this is a sealed bearing here. Not all lower crown races are the same. Usually the pitch of this angle here is different. I looked at the two of these. They do seem different, so I am going to go ahead and swap them over. Usually there's a tab that you can get into here to pry the old one off. It's a good idea just to work, work it around evenly though instead of just prying in one area because then you will bend it. This is where things start to get a little bit greasy so I put the gloves on. I'm usually really bad about wearing gloves for things like this. Um, it's a good idea just to put a little bit of grease around here before you put the new crown race on. And that one slid on extremely easily. Some of them you have to you have a special driver to put them on or you can use a piece of PVC piping. But I mean, that's gone on as far as it will go. Now comes the second part of improvising on this. I don't have a press to seat the lower headset. So as you can see, the bike is upside down. It's resting on a piece of wood here. This is my unofficial headset setting tool. So a little bit of grease. I guess we'll put it I'll put it on the frame. That was another thing that was surprisingly easy. So I'm very happy with those two things and the fork can go on now. All right, the bike is back in its proper orientation. I'm gonna use a little bit more grease before I put uh, the lower bearing on here. Also a little grease in the bottom of this cup. All right, the fork can slide right on in. Some of the top headset pieces came out, so we'll just get those back in place. Now, being that this fork came from a different bike, the steer tube was cut to match that bike. The steer tube really needs to be longer on this one. And if I go ahead and put back the stem and bars as they are it's going to make them really low because i'm not able to put any of these spacers back on luckily i have from my old hardtail a riser stem which i can put on here and should actually get the bars back to just about where they need to be and as you can see it literally just fits on here you don't really want to tighten this down so just uh, put a little bit of pressure on it and it'll be good to hold everything together now, just like with the top cap, there's no reason to really tighten these down yet. I mean, you want them tight enough that it's not going to fall apart. But once the wheel is back on, then I can get on and set the roll of the bars. You know, make sure that everything is straight. That's where tightening down the stem is going to come into play. All right, now the brake can go back on. I've seen people do this two different ways in terms of routing it. I think the correct way and the smart way is to route it actually through the inside of the fork. This little tab here, which I actually really like on the rock shocks, you just pop it in instead of having to deal with another screw to have to mess with. Um, but anyway, route it to the inside. That way, if you get in a crash, um, this brake hose doesn't get smashed into the ground. And this is yet another item that you do not want to really crank down on yet either. Um, these are designed in a way that they can kind of move laterally. And then, you know, once the wheel is on, you have to align it to the brake rotor. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with putting the wheel back on or aligning the caliper. Um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to move on now to the next upgrade, and that is the dropper post. Now, PNW is actually kind enough to send me this ridge dropper. It's 125 millimeters. It's available through them and also through a bunch of, of bike parts retailers for 129 in this sleeve marked small parts is the cable that operates it and then also the lever 
Now this is the Puget lever and it's actually designed primarily for bikes that have a two by drivetrain. So it has this kind of stealth style dropper that's meant to go along with your brake lever. And then also if you had a two by or three by drivetrain and still had the shifters over there, it's not gonna interfere with that. And this of course is available through them and through other retailers for $29. So we'll take a look at the dropper. It's 125 millimeters of travel. It's a 30.9, which is what's compatible with this frame, the seat tube on this frame. Now this is kind of their budget model. This is kind of, they said that's basically intended for somebody who's never used a dropper before and maybe doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money getting into it, not knowing if they're going to like it. Dropper posts will add some weight onto the bike, although we probably lost some weight swapping those forks over. So we're at 569.5 grams, which is really not bad at all, especially considering that this is a budget dropper. Now there are quite a few small parts that come with this that if you've never done one of these before, you might not know what does what. What attaches at the bottom of the dropper is actually this smaller cylinder here. So that's just gonna slide on. And you can see that goes right into that. And then once this goes together, it's gonna slide in here and allow the actuation. This is just gonna route the cable through here. So the cable housing is gonna go into here. And that's just gonna prevent anything from kinking in this one spot with this solid piece. This small piece here is what will drop down in here and the actual cable attaches to that. And then of course the little end that you clamp down on the cable. So one thing I really like about this lever is that it's actually on a little pivoting joint which means that you can take that screw out and just drop it over versus some of the other ones where they have to be slid on, which means you have to take your grips off. Now on this, I think I'm gonna go outboard of the brakes. I think that's gonna put it in the right spot for my thumb. All right, I'm gonna leave this pretty loose too because I just don't know the exact positioning of what's gonna be comfortable yet. Now Marin has been kind enough to give you ports for routing the internal cable uh, for this dropper post or any dropper post. Yeah, I think it's in there tight. There we go. So that can come out. So it's going to come out here where this other cable comes out. And as you can see, that was quite a pain. So this is the part that there is really no easy way to do is routing the cable and then trying to get it to come back out here. Um, I think I'm actually going to start, it might be wiser to start at the bottom because that's going to be, you know, it's sharing that position with another cable. Filming this would be probably pretty boring. Okay, that took probably 10 minutes or so, but I was able to feed it through. I grabbed it with an Allen wrench and then uh, was able to pull it towards the opening and then grab onto it with this and pull it out. Uh, There's just no easy way to do it, unfortunately. So now the cable itself can be fed through. A little bit of grease on here, just so that it doesn't seize into the frame. Now this can go onto here, then it's gonna rotate down and then I'm gonna pull the cable from the other side to take away all that slack. Now that's seated down at the bottom and keeping kind of pressure on it so it doesn't unseat itself, I'm just pulling the cable and housing through. Now, one thing we forgot to film was just cutting this cable housing. You have to do that before you feed the cable through it. So this is going to feed through here and go on top of this little metal piece. Okay, so it's important to unscrew this first so that the cable has a place to go. All right. Okay, so the cable's now in. Basically just, I'm putting some pressure on my thumb, pressure on the cable, tighten this clamp down, which is what's gonna hold everything in place. 
And let's just snug this down. And test it out. Goes up. There's obviously a little bit more slack I need to take out of it. I can feel it in there right now. Something moved a little bit. But up. Oh, quick motion too. So I like that. Last thing to do here is to cut this cable. I generally like to leave it a little bit long, you know, just in case you need to come back and, and trim it again or adjust something. It's better to have more cable than less. So now the only thing left for me to do is swap this seat over. No reason to show that. And then just adjust the cockpit how I like and get the front wheel on. So I'm going to go ahead and do all those things. And then uh, we'll take a look at this thing on the trails, see if these upgrades made a difference. Well, this video has turned out to be way longer than I had intended it to be. So we're going to save that for another video. We'll get it on the trails. I'll give you some impressions of both of these two upgrades, see if it really did make a difference. I'm also going to do a little bit of a cost comparison between going this route and upgrading a slightly cheaper bike versus just getting a better bike to start with. So I'll leave you with this nice photo I took of the bike on one of my rides last week. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And stay tuned for the next video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.